G'day, I'm Paul. Now, there are convertibles and then there are convertibles. Bentley has absolutely nailed the design, but now they have jam-packed their cars full of technology. This is the Bentley Continental GT convertible with the W12 engine. It's priced at just under $465,000, and it competes with cars like the Mercedes-Benz S-Class Cab, the Ferrari Portofino, and the Aston Martin DB11. Today, we're going to do a detailed review of this very stunning looking car. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you, you can use the time codes up on the screen there or if you're on YouTube just scroll down to the chapters below and if you haven't done it already I'd love it if you could hit the subscribe button and also press the bell icon because that's going to tell you every single time we drive a car without a roof. Okay before we get stuck into the exterior let me know in the comments below is this as stunning as I think it is? Do you reckon this is the best looking convertible in this segment? Let me know your thoughts. So this car is available normally I tell you how many colors you can choose from but you literally have an infinite supply of colors to choose from. So you have their stock sheet of colors, or you can actually give Bentley a color to color match. So if you have a favorite shoe, or a favorite top, or a favorite set of pants, they will color match your car for you. Now this one here in particular, instead of the big gangster chrome look, this has a black highlights package. So you'll notice in place of chrome around the car, such as around the lights on the grill here, it is just black and it really works well with this black color. It makes the car stand out and it turns heads like you wouldn't believe. This car's also a little bit special. And I'll explain why shortly. It is rare, and I think this car in particular will go up in value. So looking at the front here, you've got a big W12 engine under the bonnet, so you have air requirements. Big air dams here, big air dams here, and if you have a little sticky beak under here, you've got radiators behind there, radar module there, and night vision camera here as well. And then this camera here for the 360 degree camera that I'll walk you through shortly. Front parking sensors. I love these headlights because yes, they're full adaptive LED headlights, but it looks like it's filled with crystals in there. All of the angles they've cut into the light housing. Jump around to the side here. <sighs> these wheels. So Mulliner specification. Mulliner is, I guess, in simple terms, Bentley's customization arm. If you do want any customizations made, the Mulliner guys do that. These are hand polished 22 inch alloy wheels. They are optional and I think they look really nice. My only concern is curbs. Can you imagine gashing those things? I don't even know how you'd fix that being a hand polished wheel. So 22 inch alloy wheels and the most impressive part is actually inside the alloy wheel. 400 and 20 millimeter rotors. This giant caliper here, 10 piston, it is an absolute whopper of a thing. Now hidden back here a little bit is the one two. So you'll know it's a W12 because they hide that in there. And I guess it's just a subtle show of the power that you're packing under the bonnet. Come around the back here. Actually, before we get to the back, just have a look at this. If you're a bystander walking past the car when the roof's down, that's what you're seeing. That is absolutely Stunning. I love that. Anyway, we'll get to the interior shortly. Okay, around the back here, same story. Those chrome elements have been deleted for all of this black. It just looks really good. You know how with the 911, with the Cabriolet, it comes up and it's got quite a big bum on it? They've really managed to just make this sleek. It's like a speedboat motoring along. It's, it's very cool. Now, exhaust pipes. Have a quick look at these. They are absolute whoppers. So to get all of those exhaust gases out of the pipe, the outlet needs to be massive. And you can see those two exhaust outlets stuck in under there. Uh, rear parking sensors here. The camera's stuck under here. Now, this particular car, when I said it's special, it's the Centenary Edition. And I'll go into detail a little bit more, but you can see that special badge there with the gold highlights there on the wheels as well. So that is what this is all about. And to open the boot, press that as well. It's pretty cool. Now, before we kick off and I'll show you this interior, I've got to mention this door. Instead of just a normal door closing mechanism, there's a little hydraulic arm in there. And the whole purpose of that is if you're parked on an incline like this, you don't want the door coming in and slamming you because it is quite a heavy door. So what they've done is when the door comes to a stop, it gets locked into that position. So it's not fully locked. If I put in a bit more effort, it closes, but it prevents the door from slamming on you. And that is such a clever mechanism that on top of that, you have soft close as well, just in case you can't be bothered closing it the whole way. And a little hand to give you your seat belt. Now, once you do close the door and you're inside, you're presented with a really impressive interior. This is what your 
almost half a million dollars is going to get you. Every single surface is soft to the touch. They've thought about quite a lot of this, so it's all leather. You can see that naked stitching there. Even the seats look fantastic with all the diamond quilting and the, the Bentley logo there. Now this car is the Centenary Edition. I mentioned that earlier, and you'll be able to tell it apart from other Bentleys on the road because of all the gold highlights. So you can see they're around the starter button on the gear shifter. It is sort of sprinkled around the car. Even the tread plates have that special Bentley insignia with 2019 written on them as well. Now, let's have a look at how soft all of this is. We use a hardness tester to see how soft a soft touch dashboard is. So let's give that a shot up the top there. That's not too bad. It's in the 60s. That's all nice and soft to the touch. And what about this center console lid? That's pretty impressive as well. So there you go. Lots of money gets you a soft dashboard. So let's talk build quality. What's it like? Tell you what, this thing is built like a tank. I really can't fault this interior. Everything is really well put together and you know it should be. Most of this stuff is done by hand. So yeah, top notch on build quality. Where's the infotainment system? Well, I've got something to show you. It's behind this panel, but this here is an optional feature that I think it's probably one of the coolest optional features you can get on a car today. So here on this face, you have three gauges. You have temperature, a compass, and also a stopwatch. But if you want the infotainment to display, you push this button and it spins around. But have a listen to this. This took three years to develop. It has 153 parts in this module. There's 40 moving parts in the entire module. It uses a custom linear gearbox that has its own ECU and tolerances within this whole unit are 0.5 millimeters. And that means every single time it operates, it self adjusts and it learns. So if the car is flexing or you're driving and it needs to seat itself in a different position on its next rotation, it will automatically do that on its own and not just go back to the position it was programmed in in the factory. So that is seriously cool and I think that alone has blown me away the most about this car. Now let's talk infotainment. I'll hit this to rotate the display. It's a 12.3 inch infotainment screen. This infotainment system is shared with the Porsche range, so it will look familiar to some of you. It's divided into three main sections on the home screen. You've got phone on the left, map, and radio. We'll jump into each of those menus. You can see with the satellite navigation, it's a really high resolution screen. Works nice and fast as well, and it can also be paired with the voice recognition system. So you can just blurt commands out for addresses or phone calls, and it will just take care of everything using the cloud if it needs to decipher any of your commands. In terms of radio, you have AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio. You have a jukebox built into it as well. And then the ability to stream from your phone. There's an auxiliary plug in there as well. And guess what? A CD player too, just for you guys that still have CDs lying around the place. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is built into the screen, but it's a wired system. So you're gonna to have to bring out the cable for that. It's not wireless. Outside of that, you have all of the settings for the car in here as well. So when you do change drive modes, that will adjust on the screen there. You can also raise the suspension here if you come into any steep driveways. And this is where you can also activate and deactivate the night vision system and then other safety systems around the car at the same time. I'll quickly run you through the screen in front of the driver as well. It's a full TFT display. On the left-hand side, you have your speed. On the right-hand side, you have the tachometer. And in the center, you can adjust the displays that come up. So at the moment, we have the date and time, and it's a trip computer. One push of the side button allows us to go to the lap timer, which operates our clock over here, our stopwatch. So watch that. That kicks on, and you can see it start counting up like that. And then you can reset it as well as you go. So that's pretty cool. And then you have your night vision camera that's built into the screen there. You can change your radio stations in there as well. Operate your telephone and show your navigation. Now, the cool thing here is that in any of these menus, one click of the view button then expands and takes away the tachometer. So you can have that full navigation display in there. And then ahead of the driver, you also have a head up display as well. Let's talk about other features. So dual zone climate control with heated seats, electric seat adjustment and auto dimming rear vision mirror. These cool LED lights that are touch sensitive, but that's about it. You have to option quite a lot of other stuff and I don't have an issue with that. A car like this is tailored by people. They'll pick the colors that they want. They'll color match things if they want to and they'll spend however much money they like. But what troubles me is some of the safety tech that is optional. So autonomous emergency braking is part of an optional package. So is basic stuff like radar cruise control. 
A lot of these features are standard on much cheaper cars and it would be nice to see Bentley actually fit that gear as standard. This car has all of those boxes ticked and a couple of others including the cooled seats. This has a massage function on the seat as well. And I love this feature, it is an air scarf, so it's a little warmer for your neck. I'll show you how that works when we go for a drive. It's also a 360 degree camera and I'll show you what that looks like. You press this, that opens it up. You have a panoramic front, panoramic rear side, rear and front as well. But you can see here the quality of this isn't amazing. I would have liked to see a much higher resolution screen. What does the key look like? Let's fish that out. So before I mention the centenary stuff, you can see that on the key there as well, nice and gold. Bentley branding, the big B there. On this side you have unlock, lock, a boot button, and then it's knurled down the edges. Now, let's talk about practicality and I'll show you the roof first. So it takes around 20 seconds to operate. You can use it up to 50 k's an hour. Here it goes. It is a cloth roof, so it's not a metal folding hard top. Here it whips over now. <laughs> I'm always paranoid it's gonna whack me in the head. And Bob's your uncle. Let's talk storage. Where are you gonna stick your phone? Well, that can easily live in there. You've also got these little side pockets on the driver's side and the passenger side in terms of bottle storage. Easily goes down there. You've got little teeth as well. Inside the door, you can easily fit a bottle plus extra storage on the side. Center console, not the world's biggest center console, but big enough. A couple of USB ports plus a 12 volt outlet. Let's have a look at this glove box. Yeah, the glove box is pretty impressive. Fits the manual plus a few other bits and pieces. And what about comfort? All imported. Yep, the seats are about as comfortable as they look. They are amazing. And then that massage function works perfectly. All of this is easy to reach and the steering wheel sits beautifully in the hands. And I love the metallic paddle shifters. Normally this is the point where I'd climb into the back and show you how all that works. But let me show you the issue. Igor, can you just shift this out of the way? So clever mechanism, all moves out of the way. You've got a hook in the back there for your nice shirts. Have a look at this. So in my current driving position, that's how much leg room there is. So despite this being a four-seater, you're definitely not going to fit anyone behind me. Let me show you what my driving position needs to be like for someone to actually fit back there. I think we're probably getting there. So I would need to drive like this to actually get someone in the back there. So don't believe the promo shots that you see. I don't think this is a proper four-seater without the driver being extremely uncomfortable. But while you are back there, you get two cup holders, a USB port and a 12-volt outlet. And while I am haunched over the steering wheel here and it's a little darker in the back, you can see that red ambient lighting that you configure through the front screen. Now, often with these convertibles, there isn't a great deal of cargo space and this is no exception. So you remember before I mentioned to open the boot, you push the Bentley logo. You give that a little push, it's motorized. There is your cargo space. 235 litres available. Off to the side, there's this cool little 12 volt outlet that pops out on a spring load. And then you have tie down hooks Beneath the floor is the car's battery, some fuses and a goo kit for the tyre. But will it fit our luggage? I'm keen to see because this is a pretty standard sort of piece of luggage that you'd expect this car to be able to fit. Try not to scratch anything here. No. That's actually pretty bad that it doesn't fit one standard piece of luggage. It looks like it's deep enough for it. Let me try it this way as well. Yeah, it's not going in. That's a shame. It's not all that practical. I'd, I'd be surprised if you could actually fit golf clubs in there as well, given how narrow that lip is. So a little bit disappointing that, you know, you'd expect to have at least a usable boot here as part of the Conti GT. Okay, we've hit the road in the Bentley. Let's talk about what is under the bonnet. It is a six litre, 12 cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. It's called a W12 because of the configuration that it's in. It produces 467 kilowatts of power and 900 Newton meters of torque. That is a whole bucket load of fun right there. It's all mated to an eight speed dual clutch transmission. The good thing about this gearbox is it doesn't really feel like a standard dual clutch. It's not fussy at low speeds, it just drives. It's just normal. I don't understand why all dual clutch gearboxes can't be like this one. Now in terms of performance figures, the official zero to 100 time is 3.8 seconds. This is what it looked like when we tried. So what does that mean in terms of fuel economy? 
well, let's be honest, it's not gonna be great. The car weighs almost 2,400 kilograms and currently we're reading 15 liters per 100 Ks. But that was all pretty much highway driving to where we are now. The longer term average, the car's done maybe 700 kilometers in total, is just over 22 liters per 100 Ks. So don't expect to get incredible fuel economy, but it has a big fuel tank. So that means that you're not going to be stopping to refill it every single time. You'll get a range of around 700 kilometers out of each tank. There is another feature here that I want to just quickly touch on, and it's a coasting function. So if you do put your car into neutral, the car is effectively just coasting but it's not safe because you don't have any control, you don't have any torque ability to get onto the throttle, you've got to put it back into drive. What this does though is it declutches effectively, puts the car into a neutral setting, and it's useful if you're going along a flat straight section of road where you don't want that effect of engine braking, which you, you get in automatic cars as you roll out of the throttle. So this simply means you're able to coast unimpeded without having to put the car manually into neutral. Another feature that they've implemented here to reduce fuel consumption is cylinder deactivation. It's able to shut down up to six cylinders to reduce the amount of fuel that you're using, and then instantly as you press the throttle, those cylinders come back to life and you get full torque again. You know, that's just one of those things that's going to use just a tiny bit less fuel every now and then. Let's talk about the comfort mode that we're in now. The ride is sensational, and there is a reason for that. The car has a three-chamber air spring setup, and that's all driven by a 48-volt system. Now, a lot of manufacturers are moving towards 48-volt for mild hybrid, Bentley does it so they can operate an anti-roll bar system that can react almost instantly and provide up to 1300 newton meters of torque to resist roll. And that means you're getting one of the best rides we've ever experienced. I mean, we're on a country road here and it is just soaking everything up beautifully. In and around the city, you can just lob it at speed humps, cobblestone roads, anything you throw at it, it just takes on without any dramas at all. So before we get into what this is like with the roof off and when we're driving a little faster, I wanna see just how responsive this is in comfort. So we're in comfort now, it's in like seventh gear. Just punch it. That's pretty good. It comes alive very nicely. There is another setting outside of comfort mode. You have custom, which is you know like an individual setting, but then you go to Bentley. And that kind of blends both worlds. It's a little firmer than comfort, but it's quicker to respond when you hit the throttle. It's always ready to go, but not quite as aggressive as sport mode. So it's kind of like a bridge in between. And it's the default setting the car starts in as well. Really like it. It's, it's just the right amount of firmness and not too much sportiness. Okay, so before we put this into sport mode, I'm gonna take the roof off. So this works at speeds of up to 50 k's an hour. There it goes, the back's now closing. And that's a good thing, if you do rock up to the lights and it goes green all of a sudden, you're not gonna be trapped. Um, and of course, we will put all the windows down for good effect. Hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. Pop it into sport mode. It instantly opens some flaps up the back there and you can hear a bit more of the engine. Actually, it sounds really good. Give this a punch. Oh yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so I'm gonna put this into manual mode. Ah, oh, yeah, this is making a really good sound. I love this. Got a punch. Yeah, this thing is hauling ass. 900 newton meters of torque and that's a punch. <laughs> Massive whistle coming out of the engine as well. Yeah, this sounds so damn good. Let's roll onto the throttle up here. Far out. That is seriously impressive. Just pins you back in the seat. 900 newton meters of torque is not an insignificant amount. And then the noises that it makes as it's rifling through the gears. I'll drop back to second here. It's got a little burble there. Remember, this is just the standard car. There will be a speed version of this eventually that will dial it up an extra notch and just get that sensation through your head. 300 kilometers an hour with the roof off <laughs> is clinically insane. Now, when you do find yourself corners, like sweeping bends, it's remarkable how flat the body sits. Can't get over that noise. And then in sport mode as well, it only sends up to 17% of torque to the front axle. So it feels predominantly like a rear wheel drive car. Here's a couple more sweeping bends. Yeah, it is surprising how flat it sits. There isn't a huge amount of scuttle shake. Often with the bigger four seat convertibles, you find that it can be a little 
wobbly as it goes over bumps, but this is very much composed and it feels fantastic regardless of how fast you're going. Now, it's also worth calling out that button I spoke about earlier that puts your neck heater on. That is working a charm because right now it's 12 degrees outside and my neck is nice and toasty. Okay, let's talk practicality. I'm going to stick this roof back on so it's a little quieter. So you can see it working there. We're doing about sort of 40, 45 k's an hour. Um, it's actually surprising how well it works while the car's moving. Sort of no dramas there at all. There it is. It's closing up now. Okay. Visibility is surprisingly good. Out the front there, it has a nice long bonnet, but I can see the extremities of it. And with those front and rear parking sensors, you're never going to find yourself in a situation where you're running into things. Visibility out the sides is good as well. These wing mirrors are massive. Visibility out the rear isn't fantastic because it is a very small and narrow window, but you know, it's fine for what it is. Now, you might not be able to hear it, but there is a rattle or something rubbing here with this window. In fact, I think it is the window against the rubber seal. As the car flexes, it sort of rubs against it and that's getting quite annoying. It's easy to fix, you probably just put a little bit of lubricant on, but it's annoying. Now, what about road noise? Often with these cars, when they don't have a fixed roof, you get a lot of road noise in the cabin. It's virtually silent in here and it is surprising how quiet it is because I was expecting to hear a lot of that tyre noise chattering through the car, but yeah, virtually silent and I guess that's what you need from such an expensive convertible. So this car has been very impressed. It is the W12 that puts a smile on your face. It is an incredibly smooth engine, but then when you punch the throttle, it just pins you back in the seat. And I can just imagine this on an autobahn or some other big long stretch of road along a coastline maybe. You could just punch the throttle and it will just deliver everything that you need. I like the fact that there is a V8 available as well. And the V8 sounds just as impressive as this, even more so with the convertible version. So look, you have a lot of options there, but in terms of the downsides, I don't understand why basic safety features are optional. You know, if people are going to option them anyway, just integrate them into the price. You shouldn't have to pay extra for safety functions you find on cheap cars. But in saying that, if you compare this to something like a Ferrari Portofino, this is understated yet beautiful, whereas the Ferrari will always be known as the entry level to the Ferrari range. And if you go down the path of an S-Class, it's just a Mercedes Benz. So this really fits in that perfect segment where you want to be seen, but you know that you can be just as quick as almost any other car on the road because it has a stonking big engine. So let me know in the comments below, what do you reckon about the Continental? Do you reckon Bentley has finally nailed design and tech? What could they change on this car? And if you've bought one, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to share it, like it, and subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we publish a new review. But until next time, take it easy.